change a light bulb. You want to know? My fees are 20 a day plus expenses. The name's Mallow. Marshall Mallow. And I'm a dick. Of the private kind. Yeah, yeah, and before you crack any blue gags, I haven't heard a thousand times. I mean a consulting detective, an investigator for hire, a gumshoe. My office was dark. I liked it that way. It was moody, noir. Man, I still hadn't gotten around to changing that damn bulb. The only light came from the neon sign with a nervous tick that hung outside my window, announcing to the world, or any part of it that happened to be passing the corner of Skid Row and embarrassing Stain Alley, that the gentleman's club downstairs featured life, not guilt. I sat back in my chair with the cracked leather of my size nines making the acquaintance of the cracked leather of my desk. I watched the garish neon rainbow play across the opposite wall as I idly peeled the label from a bottle of cheap whiskey. It was the only thing the bottle was good for now. I drained its drained cleaner contents three days earlier and hadn't gotten around to getting a replacement yet. Nor would I in the foreseeable, unless a case came in, and soon. That didn't seem too likely. The last case I had been involved with had been almost a month before. And even then, I'd only found out Miss Scarlett had done it by peeking into the envelope while my landlord Kaplunsky was taking the leap. Still, I won the game, and the month's grace on the rent that he gambled. Schmuck should have guessed it was the dame. It's always the dame. Dames equal danger. <laughs> Being a dick was hard. I'm, I mean, life as a private detective was pretty tough. Or it had been until she walked into my life. <laughs> My eggs were burning just looking at it in outline. She wore a dress of rich ruby satin that clung to her body like it was scared it could fall off at any second. Her jet black hair was worn in a style you only get from expensive salons, yet her obvious state of agitation had allowed her stray strands to break loose and caress her slender neck. It contrasted with the pale skin there like a raven's feather on a marble tombstone. A tombstone on which only one word was legible. Died. Her eyes were a shade of green that would make envy jealous. The color of money. Her lips were like, like the kind of toilet paper you get in the really swell hotels. Soft, pink, and something I'm sure I'd enjoy feeling pressed against my back. And as for her breasts... <laughs> mm. Not a cleavage. You can say that again, sister. No. That's my name. Not a cleavage. Mrs. Not a cleavage. And you are... Wallow? That's Mallow. It's a door, yeah. Don't ask. 
Um, take a seat. Take the weight off your bra strap. Thank you. So, what can I do for you? Mr. Mallow, I need your help. Wait. Call me Marshall. Marshall, I need your help. Actually, no. Call me Marsh. Marsh, I need... No, no. Call me Mushy Chucks. Yeah, perhaps you're right. Let's stick to Marshall. Mr. Mallow, I need your help. I need you to help me find my baby. He's been missing nearly a week. The police in this town say they cannot do anything until he's been missing more than a month. And I don't know what to do because who well, blah 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 boobies blah 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 bank account blah 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 boobies boobies blah blah bank account. Anyway, she was clearly one classy dame and rich. And here to spend some of those witches hiring my services as a as a private investigator. I thought I had it made. Little did I know then that she would plunge me into a viper's breast, I mean nest, viper's nest, of lies, plots, poisons, intrigue, conspiracies, shadowy figures, plans for world domination, ancient secret societies, murder, and stale breakfast cereals.